you guys doing the local? I, Tim, you're a local guy, aren't you? Yep, I do some, absolutely. That's kind of the, the core of my business. So does anybody know what these uh, organic rankings now affect local, local Google says, blah, 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 blah. Well, it so I am assuming that, that a stronger presence in organic is now affecting your local mobile listings. Is that the deal? It it always has had some effect. I haven't seen that article though, so I can't really speak to it. Yeah, well, they had a version of this on uh, Search Engine Land as well. Um, essentially, they've you know it's it's like when Google changes the uh, you know the normal you know, spam list or whatever. So the Google guidelines, I guess you could call them, were updated. So prominence is also based on information that Google has about a business from across the web, like links, articles, and directories. Google review count and score are factored into local... Okay, so essentially they're saying that anything you would do normally for your site will also affect your rankings as far as local goes. Yeah, I think that's that's generally true, but also that there's a lot more that you do for local that wouldn't necessarily move the dial on um, or move the needle for organic. Um, yeah, so the inverse isn't true. It's it's just right. mostly organic going the local direction. Right. And and again, so you're saying this has probably been around for a while and that it's just sort of them updating their guidelines. Yeah, I, basically if. Uh, it, it, it has always been true that if you rank well for organic, it certainly is going to at least be helpful in local ranking, but there's a lot of other stuff you do for local. Google business, my business page shows up local search, search, show, share, share, okay, double key. All right, well, you know, hey, again, I do corporate, so I don't do much local at all. Yeah. Are you so. talking, well, hang on, are we talking about... Um, let me make sure I'm not muted. Are we talking about local Google My Business or what? Because their Google just posted. I posted it in chat. They actually posted a way to how to rank your listings in mobile on um, Google My Business. Yeah, I don't even know if this is mobile per se. It, they're just talking about just local in general. So even local packs and things of that that nature. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's this. This is a write up on the on the actual Google link that I posted in chat. I'm looking at it. Of course. I, I'm curious if this is a direct quote here because the fact they have the word directories in here is kind of funny. It is. Directories? Since when is Google telling us to do that again? <laughs> yeah, there's, I don't think there's anything new in this this article or in that link. You know what they say at the at the end is or in their conclusion it's relevance, distance, and prominence, and prominence has to do with um, you know uh, how you rank. In terms of um, uh, you know a number of factors, including reviews and uh, other things, reviews count just a ton, especially the right reviews for local. So I don't see anything new in that, to be honest. No, nor do I. Steve, is that a quote from the article? That's a quote from the article. Yeah. Thank you. Verbatim. So what they did is they basically took a quote from. Um, the Google Plus, the Google post from my business that they put out yesterday about that. So yeah, let's see what else. There was another, I think, local something here I had that was kind of. Someone passed this to me. I'm not even sure. When fake reviews are bad for business, I don't know if there was anyone in here, but <laughs> I was somebody in the dojo rooms. I'm I'm trying to think of a, a situation where fake reviews aren't bad for business. <laughs> Well, essentially the way this story went, um, I'll, I'll pull it up, uh, that the person, I guess at some point, let's see, so you decided to hire an SEO company, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so yeah, uh, some SEO company, um, here, let me grab this, some SEO company had done some work for them and put out fake reviews. Now, obviously some of them were going to be positive because they're not going to go out and put bad ones. So... Uh, so the story goes is uh, the business terminated the relationship with the SEO company after seeing that these reviews and is trying to have them removed. Uh, they've also reported a significant reduction in bookings, yada, yada. Uh, end of the story, though, is they went to Google and uh, said, could you take them down? Um, Uh, Worryingly, the business support in this instance from Google replied that they would not be removing these reviews as they were not impacting the business negatively. 
<laughs> so Google basically said, they, they went to Google and said, listen, these are all fake, an SEO company did them. And Google came back to them and, and said, well, no, they're all positive. We, we don't take down positive reviews. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, we're spamming. Could you get rid of these? No, it's okay. Just leave them. Nobody cares. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Interesting. That's nice. How, how could that possibly um, hurt them, though, really? Were they, I, I didn't see the article. Were they clearly sort of, you know, spammy, fake reviews or something? Um, no, I... That's, they look fairly legit. Like, they're right here. Oh, sorry. Um, well, I'll give you guys the uh, article here in the chat. Yeah. But they, they look pretty legit, but, like, they're not, like, Indian, you know, three-word sentences. Stuff, so I don't <laughs> there know. was an instance in New York where the uh, Attorney General's office set up a sting. They created a yogurt business, and uh, then they got approached by people to do fake reviews. And the companies that were offering the fake reviews actually got busted. There was a pile of them. And this is maybe two years, maybe three years ago. So, I mean, it's depending on where you are, it's actually illegal. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, it looks like they're, it looks like they're doing damage protection. You know, they're, they're, they're trying to protect themselves against getting nailed down the road. But whoever they talked to at Google just said, nah, they're, they're not negative. They're good. They're fine. Leave them. So, you know, I'm not sure what the spam team would think about that. But. Okay, you know. Actually, know. they are pretty spammy, pretty obvious, bad English reviews. They they look pretty bad. Yeah. And even if they're the grammar is okay, they look like somebody wrote a script for them to follow. That um, you know you'd see in a bad ad for uh, as seen on TV products or something. And somebody would look at the names of those reviews and say, my God, don't they actually serve any real people? <laughs> Good point, yes, also. <laughs> well, yeah, again, they said bookings have dropped, so, you know. <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of users, when they when they look at reviews, all they do is just scan the, you know, how many of these are four or five star? They don't even read the damn thing. That's a good point, Doc. I think that once people do start looking at the actual reviews, if they do, then they can actually have a negative impact if they're clearly spammy. Massively. If, if your reviews look fake, it, it's worse than not having any. And yep. I've seen genuine companies struggle uh, where a couple of actual reviews that you know they didn't pay for certainly just look so bad that it looked like they, they paid for them. I wonder if you can overcome that at all by responding to the reviews. One thing that I always try to do is respond on behalf of the business uh, for clients and, and you know say something nice in return. And I wonder if that would help you overcome any any sort of imply or you know inferred um, fakiness for them. Some people can't write. <laughs> All right now I'm not even able to speak but uh, <laughs> Well, it'd be great if you could edit them, but there's some people like what was the place? Um, gosh, someone told me there was a, it was a Google guide that told me that um, they wanted your uh, log into your Google account so they could basically go in and write a review under your username for their automobile dealership. <laughs> oh wow! Think so, Tim. Yeah. So that's the kind of stuff that's going. However, the thing is, in terms of search terms and ranking. The more you reply back to a review, the the you, those keywords in the reply actually rank in Google search as well as the um, it helps your review numbers because you don't get stars until you get over five reviews on local. But if you've got three reviews and um, replies to each one, you can rank in the local pack without having five reviews. Yeah. Yeah, Elmer, Elmer at my office, we did a lot because, you know, we have some clients that have, you know, over a thousand locations. So we had to figure out how to do it, how to teach them to handle reviews. And then also we were um, asked to figure out how things rank. And I think the Google Plus post, I mean, the Improve Your Local Rank post that I posted in chat um, is, is part of those things. We, we found a lot more based on reviews how old the, the domain age is actually is a factor in local rankings and whether you like in the three-pack, um, how, how quick you reply to comments, is your phone number correct, 
Um, Google tests your phone number. How is your phone number answered before three rings? So there's, there's a lot of different factors in that. Oh, that last one's interesting, huh? You know, I, I appreciate people posting news, and, and Barry is a hard-working dude. You know, Barry's up at 6 o'clock every morning posting crap, and uh, I appreciate the, the, the work ethic. But, you know, the, these kind of, <clears throat> I think we did this the week before or two weeks ago, these, these uh, something's happening. <laughs> we have no confirmation. We have no evidence. But, hey, we think something might be happening out there. <laughs> you know, this is another one. I'm like, you know, is Google testing the Penguin 4.0 algorithm? Could it be true? Look, three people on a forum said something about <laughs> things moving. You know, I don't know. When we used to uh, do the regulators news show, we used to make jokes about this all the time that, you know, at any given time, I'm sure that you could find four people that are seeing movement. <laughs> so does that, you know, is this a reportable thing? I don't know. I don't know. It, it drives me nuts, Frank. I tell you that. I think Barry's the worst for it. It's always something that, you know, no news is news. I just ignore I that kind of stuff. It's just noise. Yeah, that's all it is, yeah. He's you know. kind of busy, and he depends on other people to send him interesting threads, and sometimes they're not very choosy about what they think is an interesting thread, and he doesn't have the time to check it as well as he should. So. I remember when Matt Cutts replying to a Twitter question actually made a blog post on various things. I was like, Gee, hey, you fuck it, ask Matt Cutts. Matt Cutts said this, and that was a blog post. It was pretty cool. Oh, Jesus, we got to make some room here. i tell you what, I will, I will step out and just listen to you. Well, no, I was thinking maybe Deborah is someone who's not talking. I, know I, you can I can be allowed. I have other things I need to do anyhow. Nice to see you guys. Again. All right. Thanks, Peter. Appreciate Good it. Yep. Yeah. You soon. All right. I've e emailed you. Yeah, I know. I've got the links. Uh, All right. Cool. Yeah. He'll jump in. Yeah, there was, he, he was writing some, I think it was a schema article over on GoFish. It was kind of interesting. So, yeah, uh, Ammon, speaking of frustration, good Lord, that session next week went everywhere. Oh my god. I was ready to just kill something, like myself, you know, just bang something off my head. And, you know. So, rank brain. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, <laughs> can, can we wait till next week? It's bad enough. I already feel like I'd never want to talk about it again. <laughs> We've got an hour. Dude, on they, I, was saying, I was saying earlier this week, this, this thing is like LSI to me. If I ever hear this word again after <laughs> next week, I'm going to hurt somebody. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to kill somebody. I swear to God, man. If anybody fucking mentions this goddamn word to me after next Thursday, someone's going to get hurt. You know, I just can't take this anymore. It's, uh, yeah, I've had enough of it. And, and, thank, and, and thank the funny thing about him is it's so simple. This is so simple. Like, you know, I, I love what Bill's saying and everything else. And it's unfortunate, but that's why we have to do what we have to do, which is get out there. But literally all we know is it changes queries. That is it. Nothing more, you know? And, and, and the worst part is, you know, kind of like LSI raising its ugly head every couple of years, you know, um, it, it's, nobody talked about this for six months, you know, mm -hmm. nobody, it just, I went away, no one said anything, and then all of a sudden, I guess it was, you know, the distilled article, and then obviously Larry's, and, you know, it, it became a, a thing again, you know, and it's just, I don't get it. I was like, well, let's 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 introduce the world to this new thing called PageRank. And anyone ever talked about that before? Let's talk about that. Yeah, it's a new thing. Just came well, out. let's face it. When when that was the only inside term they they knew from Google, they talked about PageRank incessantly. Then along came, you know, Penga, Penguin, and Panda, and suddenly those were the buzzwords that everyone would talk about all the time because it shows that I'm in. I know about SEO. And then it was hummingbird. Uh, hummingbird. You can put hummingbird on our list. Exactly. Now you know we we now have you know that people know five components of this very complex thing, and they can't do anything except drop names of one of the five. And like I said, it's like going into a mechanic and he only knows the name for five parts of a car. 
<laughs> These here are your tires. This yeah. is the boot. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I've checked the your tires, your windscreen wiper, your exhaust pipe, and your ashtray. It's none of those, so it must be the rear seat. The car still won't start. <laughs> your engine is missing. Let me adjust your brakes. <laughs> Yeah, and just, there, there is this uh, tendency, you know, when any new word comes out of Google, everyone has to jump on it. Everyone's hoping that it's going to get a lot of traffic as people look it up. And that as long as they can put some content that isn't totally awful out there, they'll rank for it. Well, do you know what? Or maybe if you you've got that mindset, <laughs> if you've got that mindset, your content is probably going to be bloody awful for it. Yep. Yeah. You know, I, I was watching the Google Webmaster Hangout this week, John Mueller's, and a uh, certain somebody, and I won't use the name on air because I'm a nice guy. Well, I'm not, but anyways. Um, literally used the word hummingbird to try and ask a question. John, um, it seems that uh, hummingbird isn't allowing my entities to rank properly on this and that and so on and so on, <laughs> keywords. And I was wondering, and I could just see John went to answer, and he was just like... <laughs> How do I do this nicely? And I was like, oh my who but yeah, he spewed the word hummingbird to preface his conversation why his entities. Like, you know, I got me some new words. Entity and hummingbird. I'm gonna use them in a sentence. Look, teacher, I can do it. And I was like, Oh yep. my fucking god, dude. I was like, it's just crazy. And I sadly there is that, there is so much of that in our industry. You know, people are always trying to show they're riding the wave, that they're on the crest, that they're up with all the latest. And do you know what? Some of them have only got to fool people who don't know anything. And therefore they think it works. Well, I mean, realize we didn't have Danny Sullivan. I mean, we had Danny Sullivan, but most of us didn't know who Danny Sullivan was before we had to figure out how to rank stuff in search engines. So it was kind of like we had to figure the crap out, and then we used to read what Danny did, and then eventually uh, Barry came out. But other than that, you know, I mean, that's kind of how it works. You know, Danny evolved into third door, marketing land, search engine land, spin. So, I mean, that's kind of – and then Webmaster World, depending on if you were in that for learning SEO and Webmaster World, some people grew up in that little path. So there's a bunch of different divergent paths for SEO. You know, you got. The well, it's funny. We were in the in the Facebook group last week. We were talking about Google Guy. So yeah, I remember that those days. Google Guides or Google Guy. Google. Well, it was Ammon, three, four people, I guess. Matt Matt did a lot of it, but apparently, yeah. In what Ammon was digging up on the, the other day, yeah, it was multiple Googlers. But that was really the first time Google really sort of reached out and participated with us. I guess was under the name Google Guy on Webmaster World. Yeah, it was, it was, back in the day. The, the story goes that Matt started the account. He just decided one day to actually go in there and, and kind of reply. Um, but once he had the account, he did share it with other people. You know the way that when he doesn't know the answer to something, he gets somebody that does. Well, what he does yeah. is just give him the login. And, okay, when you've got time, post it. So there's there's no knowing. Okay, how many and now we have, have multiple Googlers talking to us. So you know we've come a long way. They even put their names and faces on videos now, and you know it's it's a long way. Again, I mean, I really like you said one, that session you guys did a while back was one of the best ones I've seen for just a candid chat with a Googler. You know. Yeah, and I do think that you know it is getting a lot better the communication, but I do think that every time there is one of these stupid articles out there. Um, yeah, what I said about that one. The one time that I've wanted to talk about something where Andre said, mm, I don't know, was rank brain. You know, because he'd seen so much crap out there that he just thought, I'm going to have to walk on eggshells so much to say anything that people aren't going to misquote, run off with entirely the wrong idea. Um, and, you know, John has exactly the same trouble. Matt has exactly the same trouble. I mean, Matt, you had people trying to work out whether he was telling the truth or not based on the color of his yeah. shirt. Yeah, that was always, you know, it, it, we asked for transparency. Then Matt would come out and make a video or say something, and you had half the people going, I believe him, and then the other half going, no, he's lying. And then the other bunch of people, actually, that would sit there and say, read between the lines. There's there's something here, but it's not what he's saying. It's somewhere you have to, you have to, you know, well, he's not. Light and smoke and 
waving fucking magic wands at their screen and shit. It was like, oh, I would I wouldn't want to be those guys at times. Well, and and the funny thing about it was Matt was phenomenal about being very careful about his statements. And even so, you still had 116 different misinterpretations prop up, pop, cropped up within 15 minutes, you know. And they, they have to miss him from that standpoint. I know I do from, from my side of the fence. Because if you listen to him and don't read anything into what he's saying, you get some good information. Well, you have to look at Matt as he was a corporate spokesperson. He needed that well. And he did that really well because he wasn't going to expose Google to any liability, but he wanted to explain something. But he also wasn't going to tell because realize he was over spam. So he wasn't going to tell you, you know, uh, quality. So he wasn't actually going to say, hey, this is a way to really screw Google up and make more work for me. He's never going to say that. A lot of the things he said was to prevent him from being overwhelmed with a bunch of crap and people doing the wrong stuff. Uh, it's it's one of those things, and it's not unique to Googlers. I mean, uh, a lot of us here, I can see some some old faces, and uh, well, these are of course going way back to the I search discussion list. You, you mentioned Danny. Well, you know, to me, Deezer is just as much one of the core pioneers. We know what it was like in the forums, and we know that even in the forums, you'd post something, and people would misinterpret what you were trying to get. But you could usually usually follow up on it. I got famous in the forums, not particularly for the same stuff that nobody else was saying, but because I took the time to explain it and to put all the wrinkles in there and to say, well, look, normally there's this, but sometimes you've got this case and this case, and that changes it in this way and this way, and you've got to think about this and this, and show the big picture. And I think we kind of need that level of discussion again. I, I was... Uh, you know, really pleased to see Ray opening up for discussion. But, uh, lover as I do, that's still not going to happen with this idea that we've all created our own islands. I, I, I know there are a lot of SEOs out there who could have added to Ray's thread, but won't because they will say to themselves, I don't want to lift her page rank. This is just to get, you know, comments on her blog and get her blog activity up. Well, for that, you just need a web ring. Yeah. Someone mentioned the iSearch. Man, those were moderated much more heavily than anything you see today. And that's what made it quieter. It wasn't immediate. That was the problem with it, is that if you made a comment in iSearch, you had to wait for me to add it and put it in the thread and then email it to everybody twice a week, right? So, yeah. Um, but People want, to, people want to see their comments published right away today because, you know, got all these uh, blog softwares masquerading as guest books, and so everybody just wants to sign everybody's guest book all over the place, and that's what we have. We have a, a web of guest books. That... <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I do say that editorial control is something our industry needs a lot more of. Um, do you know what? I think I've only ever submitted two articles to to Danny, and he bounced both of them. He he didn't publish them. <laughs> Anything intelligent he doesn't publish. No, 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 no. It's, it, yeah. It told me that as long as there was any level of speculation in this, he didn't want it, and that that was fine. Speaking of LSI, whatever happened to Orion? Hey, 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 hey. Now, don't don't you do that, man. Okay. <laughs> now, Orion was nothing to do with LSI, and, and LSI refused to go there. Uh, someone brought this stupid thing up to me again the other day because, oh, by the way, the reason this came up, Ammon, was uh, there was a fellow in, I think, the group on um, Google+, Plus, uh, Semantic Group. He had mentioned LSI, and then he mentioned some rank brain stuff, and I kind of went in and stomped on him. And he came back and said, really sorry, um, I got my facts wrong, thank you for the link, so on and so on. It was an anti Larry story, so I thought I'd share that with you. So then I went public and said, I really love this guy, He, you know what I mean, thank you very much for at least, you know, taking your words back. Yeah, anyway, no, was, Ellis, I, what? yeah, yeah, so I was very pleased to see that. Um, anyways, no, the funny thing is, I literally could show you a link of the press release um, where all that started. 
<clears throat> because um, at the time Google bought this company um, they did LSI stuff and they had this technology Google bought them for called AdWords yeah neat huh ever heard of it funny enough though since then 2003 or whatever Google, uh, organic guys have latched onto that LSI word and keep using it Orion was something different uh, Orialon which is Orion you know uh, he had some patents in the Australian database and stuff, and uh, I, I looked at some of his papers. Now, I guess that's probably, I don't know, 2004 they picked him up. I'm not sure. And uh, sadly, Bill's not here, but I remember Bill telling me as well that all the patents disappeared after Google picked this guy up. What that was is something we all see and know too well today called no-click searching. And and it was funny because I remember writing about this uh, last time I mentioned it, it brought it up in, in writing at least was maybe 20, 2007 and funny enough whatever happened to um, Orion was the name of my post so I'm not sure if you're trolling me there Frank um, <laughs> but it was no click searching which is essentially something we all see today with knowledge graph cards with SERPs that if you like looking for a menu and it shows you the steps of, of that recipe you know funny enough we have no click searching today but back at the time SEOs were like, no, that's it. I, I want to start optimizing for Bing if they ever do that. And da da da, and all the threats and all the crap coming from the SEOs out there was, was about how you know if that starts happening, I'm out of here. Meanwhile, we live in a world today where we accept it that it's normal. We we see Google doing this kind of stuff all the time, and you know apparently none of us left. So, but yeah, uh, Orion was actually that no-click searching kind of thing that we see all the time now. So, there you go. Yeah, there's yeah. my uh, two cents on LSI and Orion. Been interesting recently digging into more of what Google use, could use, can't use on click through. And you know, a lot of it is about the quality of data and the amount of processing it takes to get there. You know, Google has business thresholds. There are things that they can do that they don't do. And you know, one of those we talked about the other day um, optical character recognition in images. Do they run it across all images? No. Why not? Because more often than not, it's a non-clue. You know, I'm taking a picture of me outside a restaurant. The only point of this photo is, oh, look, I'm at a restaurant. The fact that there's a sign in the background and a bus going past and both have writing on doesn't add anything to the quality of the image. In SEO, if you're doing what's going on right now, you're behind. Yeah. I've said that for a long time. Well, you know, it's funny, Terry. Last night, Doc and I and some of the members were hanging out just on Skype in a private call, and and I was we were talking about that whole future proofing, that whole you know staying ahead of the curve. And I and I and I was saying to those guys that it, it becomes even more important if you work with large corporations, because by the time you know you if you're not ahead of the game, you're you're oh. done because it takes you six months to get anything through the system. You know what I mean? By the time it gets through, you know, we joked earlier about that one large corp. We tried to get like title tags changed and stuff like that. By the time it gets through the red tape, something that would take you and I two minutes on our website takes three months with these people. So literally, yeah, you, you start, and if it's mobile strategy or whatever, you literally need to be thinking where is the future search six months from now in these corporate situations because by the time you get anything done, it's going to be six months, like on a, on a strategic level, right? So yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, but a pharmaceutical company. I was doing some PPC for one of them. Literally six months turnaround. Well, but as I was talking about reviews and how you could edit or reply to reviews on Google+, and that was five years ago. I was about three years too early in terms of Google actually rolling it out for a client that had over a 1,000 locations. So I can't say which one, but you, you understand what I'm talking about. The, the, the fact being is I was way too far ahead and so what I've learned is I can see where things are going, but I think it's harder to strategically plan how to be able to flex for that as opposed to putting your ass out there and saying, hey, we do it this way, and then you sit around and they have, you know, you burn through $25,000 worth of budget, and Google still hasn't moved yet. So I think that's the one cautionary note I would give is being too far ahead um, sometimes you just got to say, well, it could be this, it could be this, instead of just saying, hey, we should do this now because Google's coming and it's going to do this. Example, when uh, Google bought 
YouTube, I went to a client immediately that day and told them to start getting ready to do video. When Google actually Pajam pajamas, Let me, I'm taking a guess here in the past. Pajamas? No, that was the music supply. They now get most of their traffic from video and have for years. Uh, I think over 30 million downloads since I started the account. Yeah, there was a guy I met at uh, one of the London SCSs who uh, started doing uh, how to how to videos in, in gardening. And that had to have been 2006. And the guy, you know, just rocketed through. You know, the, the next year, he, he owned everything. Think about it, Frank. There's no better way to sell to, uh, over the Internet, show a musical instrument. The players could actually, we brought in professional players to do the videos. They could hear like all different styles of music being played and watch, see how the guitar hangs on the players, that sort of thing. It was unreal. And then we put the video on the actual product page. Man, uh, drives a lot of traffic for them. Ammon, yeah, you're, Ammon you're saying on the yeah. side there about, you know, that you've had it take a year and still not get approved. And that's the thing, you know, I mean, I, I think, I, I say this a lot to people that, you know, dojo members and this and that, that they start going, well, the little guy doesn't stand a chance anymore, this and that. And, and I say, well, that's not true, because if you're nimble, if you can be quick, and I always say the art of war as well, you know, you don't go after head turn against the board. <laughs> Remember that, Terry? Yeah, yeah, a certain big uh, used car... Uh, newspaper website, etc. We were in a meeting one day, and they said to Terry and I, "We'd like to rank number one for used Ford." You know, we didn't really think much of it, but we went and took a look at the SERP. Imagine that Ford ranked number one for that. <laughs> it was like, "Are used people serious? Like you're not going to get that." So you got to attack from the sides. But anyways, small businesses can be nimble. You know, you you can you can be nimble. Whereas like like Ammon's saying here in our side chat that. You know, big, large corporations sometimes can take six months, four months, and then, like Damon saying, not even do it out, not follow the advice given. So I, I, I don't know, Ammon. I think that that's the one thing I always tend to lean on with the people that think they don't stand a chance is that you're, you've got speed on your side. You've got the ability to be nimble, you know. Yeah, and t uh, Tony just said in the sideline something that plays to that as well. You know, what happens if during that time some change to the uh, happens and undoes you know, it, it reverses all your advice. Well, as I said to Tony, you, you don't. You don't do that or you're going to lose the contract. This is why corporate SEO is very conservative most well, of the time. Every now and again, they'll ask to take a risk. But most of the time, you don't take risks with anything that might change. Anything that has any likelihood of changing, you don't touch. You, you play to the long game. Well, if you did no follow tags on a corporate website, you're an idiot. You know what I mean? You had to take them down. And then six months later, and you had to bill them twice, and that really pissed them off, and you probably lost a client. I never did anything like that. But a lot of the times with, like, high-level corporate, because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working on stuff that is, you know, these are Fortune 50, Fortune 5, you know. And so what we're doing is a lot of times the client screws something up, and you just redo it. That's all you can do, you know. Um, you know, all of a sudden our Google Webmaster Tools uh, tag is gone because somebody up there at the front page and blew it away. Well, you've got reports due at the end of the month, so you better make sure you get a notification if that page changed. Then you end up sending page monitoring to make sure that the, when the tag is removed, you get an email. So that's the kind of thing with corporate client is you've got to babysit to make sure that the IT department who doesn't necessarily always have access to SEO because the SEO sometimes is in the marketing suite and you're passing that through the marketing suite to the technical people, that the technical people are monitored because if they screw your stuff up, it's your head on the block, not the IT people. Dave Davies, welcome to the show and the family and the whatever. Good to see you, man. Well, nice to be here. Jump on in. Yeah, yeah, I know it's your first time, so you have to get used to it. you got to kind of run someone over with a truck around here to get a word in. So anyways, <laughs> uh, are you doing corporate? Are you working corporate or SMBs? or you know, What's I, I your take on, on the whole? 
we have a lot of smaller ones too and, and a couple larger ones. I think a lot of the points that are being made here are entirely right where you, you do have the advantage as a smaller company um, to go in, be a little more nimble, react a, a little faster. On the other side, and, and you know, to be fair to, to some of them, um, you know, their budgets tend to be smaller, their risk factors tend to be, you know, they have to be a little more protectorate. So yeah, as you're giving this advice, it's great advice. Yes, they can be nimble, but they don't have the resources to put in. So if you have a couple misfires out of the gate, well, there's their budget. Yeah. Now they, they can't afford to do that next thing. So, um, but the nim being the nimble is, you know, I, I, the first thing I was thinking of, or, or one of the things I was thinking of is, you know, chasing after the author. And yeah, if you went in there early with the author tags, great. If you were, you know, a, a little delayed by, you know, a, a year or so, all of a sudden it was disappearing and you were, you know, sort of, sort of hooped. Um, so, yeah. But, you know, think, taking stuff like AMP, you know I mean? That's something you could quickly implement. You know what I mean? Um, even changing title tags or let, let's say recommendations from an audit. I mean, my, my, my SMB clients can get that stuff pretty much sorted out within a 10 day period. Whereas, you know, Terry, I literally, a major insurance company in the UK, and I'm sure it, that Ammon could probably guess who it is. A lot of our friends, uh, Ben McKay, have worked there and so on and so on. Um, but the funny story was, is, you know, so one, one SEO friend of ours, uh, you know, called me in to do an audit, okay. Then two years later, um, he left the company, but another person that we all knew um, took over his spot. So he, you know, he says to him, he says, well, you know, who should I get a hold of to get the ball rolling? Oh, give Dave a call. So he gives me, you know, gets a hold of me. And I'm like, oh, I just did an audit for you guys a couple years ago. He's like, yeah, well, we want another one. <laughs> okay, fine. You know, I'll take your money. And then I went and, you know, I did the audit. And then I went back and I purposely didn't look at the one I had done before. I went back and looked at the one I had done two years earlier, and literally I could have almost just cut and pasted and sent that off. Like <laughs> so little had changed from, you know, like okay, yeah, give me you know a couple thousand dollars and then do nothing with the information. It was like okay, you know, it, so I don't know corporate gets like that. Like AMP, we're talking, um, I guess it was last week, and Steve Garenser was in here, and Ledger, he's got a corporate client of a fairly large site that just finished you know, relaunching back in January. Now, they're not going to redevelop the site just for AMPs. So, whereas, again, a smaller, you know, technical stuff like that, I think smaller businesses can actually implement quicker, right? So, yeah. yeah I think Ammon actually just made a, made a really good point there, uh, like a, a great example talking about schema. And I just sent some schema over to a smaller client. Um, you know, they're, they're just a couple million. And their tech team had it. It was, you know, it was up within 24 hours deployed because, they had access to all of their, their entire database. Um, you know, a couple little tweaks needed to be done after. That was done within 24 hours of that, right? Full, I sent over the ID. I sent over the scheme I wanted on there. Within 48 hours, it was, it was validating and, and online. Um, whereas, yeah, you try and get that through a, a major publisher or something like that. And it's like pulling teeth. And, yeah, they're going to have a dozen meetings trying to figure out what kind and what and sending questions back and, you know, missing the boat entirely. Well, another, yeah, and I think someone made the point uh, shortly ago that the, even the, the corp stuff, you can't just jump on stuff. You know, like how many things we see from Google that within six months they pulled it or changed it or, that, or ripped it or its value changed. You know, I've had that like even when AMP started coming around last year, I had corporate clients asking me, you know, well, should we be worried about this? Should you know? And I, I invariably a lot of times have to say we have to just sit and watch and see what happens with it. Well, it's kind of like with schema. For example, I figured out that a schema didn't exist, and a major how can I say it? a major manufacturer of something that is a very big company has an opportunity to basically create schema for the world that doesn't exist on something, and for them, it's a PR play, it's a branding play, it's a their part in the universe play about creating schema for their industry and the world. So the big hang up now is I've already written three POVs. We've had 27 meetings, but at this point it now comes down to legal. What are the implications if the client creates schema for the world? Are they responsible if something goes wrong? And so that's really what hasn't really ever occurred because I think we're creating a standard, and I don't think legal understands how to deal with schema. You know what I mean? If, if you're a big, huge Fortune 50 company, 
and you create schema for your industry that's huge, are you responsible for anything or liable for any issues that come from the use of that schema or anything that you got wrong in it? Yeah, and to a large extent, it's not just the size of the company. The size of the company magnifies it because when a company gets to a certain size, it starts to get departmentalized. And when it gets departmentalized, it means I want to get a change through. First, it goes to IT to see if they can do it, if it's feasible. It goes to marketing to decide whether there is a good reason for them to want to do it or some other department to champion it. It then goes through financing to see if you've got it in the budget to allocate it. It then goes to legal to see if there's any implications that a company needs to be aware of. And in between all of these different departments meeting and occasionally meeting together, but mostly meeting on their own to discuss it, yeah, it, it, it takes months. But I would say that to an extent any company is also influenced by age and success. The company that's got a big budget, look, I've got changes that I predict are going to add five million to your bottom line in the next eight months. Well, to a lot of companies, that's a big deal. To some companies, five million in six months is actually chump change, and therefore they are going to look at that in a whole different context. That even a growth of you know one percent is massive for them, but it's only one percent. They are still going to consider the other ninety-nine percent really carefully. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's one of those things of I, the whole process you said where it goes from IT to marketing to legal to back, and now that it's gotten all approved, does IT have time to do it, and when can they get to it? So, totally, totally agree with what you're saying. Anyway.